Hello everyone, my name is Tom and I am an organist. I live here in the east of England and I get up to all kinds of things in the worlds of organs. I get up to uh, playing electronic instruments, church organs and even the mighty theatre organs like Wurlitzers and Comptons. And I also teach a lot of people how to play the organ and also piano and keyboard. And in this video I thought I would give you piano players some hints and tips on how to play a church organ, maybe the first time when you go, or maybe just at that moment, somebody goes, hey, you're here, why don't you come and have a go on this amazing pipe organ? You'd be like, uh, well, I haven't got any music and I don't know how to play the organ. But don't worry, we're gonna give you a little guided tour today of a kind of a small, medium-sized church organ. Now, unfortunately, um, this video I've had planned for quite a while on my YouTube channel. Um, but unfortunately, with COVID, it means getting access to uh, church pipe organs in my area is very difficult. Most of them are in villages or in the, the town, and either they're either locked, um, except for Sundays, services or events, um, or there just isn't the ease of access for, for doing. So we're gonna be using this virtual organ, which you can see on the screen, and I'm gonna be explaining to you the basics of how to play a pipe organ. Now when I say how to play a pipe organ, I'm not going to be teaching you how to play technique, how to play the pedals. We're just going to take a little tour about what you might find and expect when you first sit down at a pipe organ. So this is a virtual organ and um, it's a very good picture of what the real instrument might possibly look like. So let's take a little guided tour. We first of all have two keyboards and a very large keyboard that you play with your feet down the bottom here. Now this is called the pedal keyboard. Now most church organs you'll probably encounter, unless you go to a really big town church or a, um, a cathedral, will have two keyboards. Some will have three, the biggest ones have four, there are even some with five and six keyboards. But for today we're going to focus on a two manual organ with a pedal board. So you're sitting at the bench of the organ and you're looking at all these keys and controls and as a piano player you're like, oh my goodness, I'm only used to one keyboard. Why are there two keyboards? Well, first of all, let's take a look at the names. So we've got the top keyboard here, which is called the swell keyboard. Don't worry why it's called that, we'll explain why in a little while. But that's the swell keyboard. Sometimes it's referred to as the swell organ. The lower keyboard, which is where organists play most of the time, this is called the great, the great keyboard, the great manual, or the great organ. And this has a, a different set of pipes to this keyboard. And then we've got the keyboard down here, which is the pedal keyboard. And this is what organists play with their feet. Now as a piano player, you haven't got to worry on your first go about playing the pedals because you'll probably want to have some lessons or do some research on how to play the pedals. So when you sit at the bench, there's normally a crossbar where you can put your heels. So tuck them under the, under the bench and that'll keep those out of the way. We've got lots of stops which you pull out with your fingers and push in with your fingers. Virtually, of course, we're doing this with the mouse. So you're sitting at the bench the organ has been turned on. You can hear the blower, the big hair dryer in the organ that's blowing the air into the reservoirs, the bellows ready to go into the pipes. And you start playing the great keyboard, which is the bottom keyboard. So I'm pushing the keys, look, and it's not making any noise. Oh dear, that's not a good start, is it? Well, why is that? Well, because unlike a piano where you, you sit down and it just works because the hammers hit the strings, pipe organs don't work unless you have them A, switched on, and B, you need to pull out the draw stops, these are the stops, to make this keyboard make a sound. So what you do is you look around the stops and you'll notice there's a little label above them. And so we, this keyboard is the great manual, we tend to call them manuals on organs, the great keyboard, the, man, the great manual, and this little marker here says great. So these stops in this, these two rows are all to do 
with that keyboard. Let's pull one of them out. Let's go with Open Diapason. Don't worry, we'll explain it to you in a minute. And let's try a C major scale on the lower keyboard. Hey, hey, well done, you're playing the organ. Now, if we push the draw stop back in, as far as it'll go, we're back to no sound on that keyboard. Pull it out as far as it'll come. You just pull it with two fingers around it. And draw stops are so cool because they're called stops because they make the organ pipe sound or stop sounding. And you pull them in, pull them out. So that's where we actually get the expression. Pulling out all the stops is, is an organist expression. It means make a big noise, make a big, bigger thing. And of course, pulling out all the stops on an organ makes a very big noise, as you heard at the beginning. So here's the diapason. There we go, very nice sound, and that's obviously what most people hear. They go, oh, that's a church organ. Let's pull out the one above it. That's nice, that's got a bit brighter. Let's pull out the next one. Oh, that's good, very squeaky. What about, oh, here's a sound, there's a stop that we recognise. Trumpet. Okay, there's a little noisy, buzzy sound there, so let's talk about those in a minute. So, so that's good, so we've got the lower keyboard playing by pulling out the stops. Let's try this one. Dulciana, I wonder what that one does. Well, that's pretty, that's quite soft, isn't it? So that would be quite nice for gentle time. Let's try the swell manual, the swell keyboard. So over here on this side of the organ, we've got the swell division, and these stops are all to do with the swell. So let's try some of this, just pull a few out at random. One of a thin nasally sound. Uh, let's try, oh, there's one here called the clarinet. Oh, pressing the stop in. That sounds quite good, doesn't it? And there's a trumpet over here. There you are, sort of trumpet-like sound. So you can see that each manual, the swell manual is the top, the great manual is the bottom, and each one has its own set of stops to make the sounds on it. Now I did say we weren't going to play the pedals today, let's just have a bit of fun, pull out the, all the pedal stops. <laughs> Whoa, it's a big noisy sounds there. And in fact, the pedals get to play the biggest pipes in the organ. So when you sit down, what you might want to do first of all is just stick to the grate, the lower keyboard, and you can use both hands on there. Middle C is in the middle of the keyboard, pretty much like the piano. But on an organ, you'll have 61 keys. Sometimes you might have a few less. Now. When you want to make some sound on the organ, as we said, we've pulled out a draw stop. But the thing is, what do these draw stops do? So now, let's take a look at what the basic sounds of an organ are. So we started early with this one, which says open diapason, and it says large. Now, it might not say large, it might just say open diapason, it might just say diapason. But the important thing is this number, eight. And that means that the biggest pipe, which is the one at the bottom of the keyboard, that one is eight feet long, okay, eight feet long. And that means that when you play middle C, you're playing a shorter pipe, but you get the same pitch as on a piano. Okay, so that's the same pitch as on a piano. And so any stop that has eight on it will play at what we call concert pitch. In other words, the same musical notes on the piano will sound at the same pitch as on the organ keyboard. The diapason rank sounds like nothing in the symphony orchestra. It's a kind of a, a flute type tone, but with a very strong sort of string type harmonic in it. And it, it is literally the sound of the church organ. And of course, when everybody hears that, they go, that sounds like a church organ. Now, the diapasons on the grate 
are normally the metal pipes that you see at the front of a pipe organ. You know at the front of a pipe organ in your local church, if you go to your village church, you'll see some, some metal pipes, sometimes they're decorated. Those are normally diapason pipes, and those ones at the front, nine times out of ten work. On some organs they're decorative, but mostly they are real pipes and they work. But behind those are many, many more pipes um, backing them up. So diapason, that's the fundamental sound of the church organ. Now, what we can then do, we can then bring in the next one, which is the four-foot diapason. This is the principle, and the diapasons are the principles of the organ. They're the foundation tone. So if I bring out the four-foot draw stop, what that then does, it engages at the same set of pipes again. These are the same type of pipes, but these are at four foot at the lowest note. So if you listen here, look, if I play the lowest key, that's an eight-foot pipe. And then our next to that is an identical set of pipes, but they start at four foot long and they get smaller as they go up. There you go, you can see that's an octave higher. Look. And if I play middle C, high, and what that one does, it, it's playing the sound of this C up here, but we're hearing it on this key. And that's because the pipes start both, one starts at eight foot, one starts at four foot. So when you actually press the one key, if you have two stops out, you actually have two pipes playing. Middle C and the octave. So when you actually play a chord, you actually get three notes, but you actually get six pipes. So why do we need that? Well, it's because organists can't reach all the way up here. They can't reach because their hands are doing different things. So the organ lets us play the sounds at different octaves on the keyboard. So let's listen to our hymn now. Let's put some pedals in just for a bit of fun. And let's hear what this sounds like. Okay, here we go then. So then what I'll do is I'll push in the four foot stop and this will make it a little bit more rounded. Then the next verse, bring the stop back out again. Isn't that great? And you can see there's a lot of variety there you can get by mixing two stops. So the eight foot then has a, um, a, a colleague which works an octave above, and you've guessed it, the 15th is, that's what we call two octaves above middle C. So this will play, the lowest key, the lowest pipe will be two feet, and then they get smaller and smaller and smaller. The smallest pipes are about the size of a small pencil. So two foot lets me play another set of pipes. We get a very bright sound. So if I push in the four foot look, I've got middle C, and two C's above. This will create a more hollow tone. And those three, if you notice, they're all in the same area, look. Okay, so we've got open diapason, the principal, and it's not unusual, this is a kind of a medium-sized church organ. So we have got another diapason at, at eight foot, which is called small. And this just basically means that they're, they're not, well, they, they're basically just not blown so hard. So it's like a softer diapason. So some, some large organs have two diapasons, but, but the diapasons, the principles, are the foundation sound of a church organ. So remember that word, diapason. By the way, if you're wondering about writing all this down, if you'd like to support my YouTube channel, you can actually um, sign up and support the channel at patreon.com forward slash keyboard skills pro, where you get access to bonus YouTube videos and lesson PDFs. And in fact, I've done you a free PDF for this lesson featuring um, screenshots and lots of cool things. So um, everything we're talking about in this video will be in a really easy to understand printable PDF that you could take that with you when you go for your first pipe organ experience. So diapasons are metal pipes, 
okay? So we then want something that produces a softer sound, a more flute-like tone. And so we have the flute family. These are made of wood. These are the square pipes. Don't normally see these. If, if you're really nice, ask the organist of the church maybe to give you a little tour. Sometimes you can get inside the organ and see the things. So we have a thing called a gedact. This is, this is a flute pipe, like a James Galway. And these are wooden pipes, they have a little stopper in the end, often. And they sound like a little flute. And again, we have eight foot, we have a four foot flute. And that produces um, a more bodyful sound, but it's a lot softer. We then got um, a, a pipe rank called the Dulciana, and this is literally a small size diapason, perfect for accompanying uh, maybe communion in a church service. You know, a bit of quiet time, people are going for their bread and wine. Because the full diapason, look, is, is too big, look. So that's what you'd use for your hymn, and so that's where the dulciana is very nice. Now, we've got the flutes, we've got the diapasons, we've then got the reeds. Now the reed pipes are very punchy and sometimes imitative of their orchestral counterpart. So when we have a trumpet, these are um, normally these have sort of brass, sometimes have brass flares like a real trumpet, um, but they have conical um, tops to the pipes and there's a reed in the bottom of the pipe. So as the air blows in the pipe, the reed vibrates a bit like a a blade of grass between your thumbs, and so we can get a, 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 a trumpet-like tone. And uh, it's not really an orchestral trumpet, but it's an organ trumpet, and so that gives the sound a bit of bite look. If I want a bit more bite, I can do this. And then I can add the trumpet rank. very, very punchy, adds bite and brightness to the organ. Um, and again, you might have some other ranks like that, and the fun one is the mixture. And what these do, these are little sets of organ pipes all under one stop, and they play little chords. So it's like a little auto-harmony feature coming from pipes. So those are some of the stops you might come across, but they basically fall into three categories. The diapasons, or principles, the flutes, and uh, you might see some of those called gedacht, Lieblich gedacht, sometimes they use these funny, bizarre words, the reeds, um, and of course the, uh, the mixtures. So you've got your basic pipes, diapasons and flutes, the reed ranks, and the mixtures. And that, that kind of corresponds to the, the basic groups of sounds. Now over here, this is the swell. So the swell has a similar set, but here we've got some, some string stops. These are very thin metal pipes. We've got voix celeste and viola de gamba. Now the viola, of course, is a string instrument. A gamba is a string pipe. Very soft, these are. Now the swell keyboard is so cool because the pipes are inside a box, uh, a little room. And in the front of this room, there are Venetian blind style swell shutters. And you have a pedal, which you can see it moving there on the bottom of the screen, or maybe a foot lever. And it lets you open and close these louvers to swell and put expression in. There you go, who knew it? A organ has expression. Um, so you can add the celeste, and that adds a bit more glow. Beautiful sound there. We've got um, a, a principle, we've got a flute look, but generally the pipes are a little softer because A, they're inside a box and they're designed to be a little bit softer. Clarinet, and the one that you always find is an, is an organ oboe. and hopefully that'll be in tune. So you can see again, we've got the flutes together, 
we've got the strings and the diapasons and the reeds, so everything's kind of grouped very nicely together. Now, on a, on a small church organ, maybe with two keyboards, you might have maybe just four or five stops for each manual. You might only have a single manual organ, which will just have a simple set of stops. Some organs you'll play won't even have a pedal board. So it depends what, what church it is. Maybe it's a digital organ. Um, uh, you can get digital organs that sound like church organs, um, but those are made by various um, organ companies. So lots of fun to be had there. And so when you now go and play your first pipe organ, I hope that some of those hints and tips will be of use to you. So a quick recap, the grate at the bottom, the swell at the top, and the pedal board is the one at the bottom. Normally the, the, the stops are grouped to link to their manual, and often there's a little label that tells you these stops work with a particular manual. We've got the three kind of families, as I like to summarize. We've got the diapasons and the principles and the flute ranks working together in little groups. We've got the reeds and the mixtures. And there's other controls as well, which we can talk about perhaps in another video. Very quickly, if you ever see an organ with these things, these numbers, don't be afraid to push them, because what you'll find is the stops might start Putting, pulling themselves out and in. And these are called registrations. The sound of an organ, how it actually sounds at that point of you playing it, is known as the registration. What sounds are being produced. So we actually have memory buttons on some organs. Again, this depends on the age of the instrument. Sometimes these are mechanical, like these levers down here. And you can, you can press them and get sounds like this. Press number two on the grate, the stops move, look. Number three. And let's press number three on the swell. And then we go to number five, bring out lots of pedal stops, and you get this. which will certainly blow the dust out of the church. Um, so there we go, and pushing all the stops in will stop the keyboards from playing, and then you slide off the bench with a big smile on your face, and you're then unfortunately hooked on playing the organ. One last tip I'll leave you with folks, so this lesson is not about how to play the organ, and this is just a little, you know, pianist toolkit to take with you, um, to give you that good head start before you get there. But the keyboards on a pipe organ are not touch sensitive. It's not like playing the piano. They're more like switches. You push them down, a connection is made, um, either electrically or mechanically, and the pipes that you have selected with the stops will play. So you have to play with a slightly different technique on the organ. A lot of piano players, first time on the organ, it sounds a bit plonky. Because they're, they're sort of used to the the, the sort of percussive action of playing the piano. So with an organ, you kind of have to keep your hands a lot close to the keyboard and lead the notes, sort of gliding your fingers, holding the keys down. sound can be produced. So there we go everyone, I hope that's of use, enjoy as and when you get your first go on a church pipe organ and if you're a piano player and have always been fascinated by the organist and all the wonderful sounds, if you love playing the piano believe you me there is nothing like playing a pipe organ. It is the most thrilling experience in the world of music I think that you'll ever hear outside hearing a live symphony orchestra. 
Thanks for watching everyone. Do hit subscribe if you'd like to share the video with your musical friends, please uh, feel free to do so. And any questions or comments, please put them below. In the meantime, don't forget you can get your free PDF by signing up and supporting Silver Level um, on patreon.com forward slash keyboard skills pro. And we'll see you in the next video um, for a few more hints and tips on playing the pipe organ for piano players. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. <laughs>